Hello students, this is the video that accompanies the first community engaged learning article that you have in week two in our class. I wanted to record this video to highlight a few important points raised in that article. I hope you've read the whole thing. Um, and I'm also going to show some, some examples from my students' past work with community engaged learning in this class last semester. So here's the first page of that article, and this article talked about various kinds of experiential learning. In particular, they talked about versions of study abroad in which students apply the information that they learn in a classroom context to a service context outside of the university. Our particular version of community engaged learning is going to happen within our class. It's not requiring any additional um, activity or travel outside of the class, though you can visit the site if you choose to do that. So I wanted to give you some summaries about what community engaged learning means in general. So community engaged learning, as the article that you read expresses, is a high impact learning practice that universities are using to improve student engagement and success. So if you're more engaged in your learning, you're necessarily going to be more successful with that learning. So community engaged learning, and I'm using CEL as the acronym, allows students to hear and learn firsthand and apply what they've been studying to real world scenarios. So in our case, you'll be applying some of the techniques of technical and professional communication that we've been practicing this semester to a nonprofit's needs, to the service of their mission. So on this slide, I wanted to highlight some information from uh, early on in the article that talks about these high impact learning practices in general across universities in the United States. So this kind of learning is pedagogically powerful. That means that it's an effective teaching technique and it has a lot of power and a lot of potency. However, across our country, not all students at all universities have equal access to community engaged learning. So there are lots of experiences that some students don't have the opportunity to participate in because they don't have the means, they don't have the time, and they don't have other resources. Data shows, however, that community-engaged learning improves student engagement, retention, and success. That all sounds great, doesn't it? So if we can find some ways to lessen the burdens on students, such as financial burdens or time burdens, and still allow them to participate in community-engaged learning, that's definitely what we want to do. So connections between classroom learning and post-graduation careers and life are very important to foster. And one of the ways to make those connections very clear is to help students to have experiences where they're applying those skills. So as it says on your screen, uh, the quote that I have circled first says, we wanna make sure all our students have opportunities to connect what they're doing in the classroom to what they want to do in their lives beyond graduation, personally and professionally. I wholeheartedly endorse that statement. I want you to learn skills and see their impact in an outside of the classroom context. And that's why I'm a firm believer in community engaged learning. So historically, however, first generation college students, minority students, and older students have had lower participation rates in community engaged learning. So we're trying to integrate such learning actually into our class for this reason, so that some of those barriers are removed. We make it easy, as I say on this slide. So this slide suggests that Faculty members are crucial in guiding students to the opportunities. Whether those opportunities are study abroad, I absolutely believe in that if you can manage to do it. Whether these are internships or, or observational training with a professional in the area, or whether it's sort of work study experience. These are all great high impact practices. So, but there are, as I mentioned previously, restraints of time and money that make it so that some students can't participate. Um, some students also don't know about these opportunities and they don't know the benefits of them. So it's our job as faculty members and uh, administrators at the university to help share this information with you. We have an office at UNM, um, the community engaged uh, teaching and research office that supports these kinds of initiatives. So finally, um, I want to highlight how community engaged learning specifically in our context aligns with our university's ethos. 
That means our credibility. That basically has to do with the mission that we have at the University of New Mexico. And an important part of our mission is to serve the community outside of our university's grounds. So the community surrounding us, both in Albuquerque and beyond in our state. Um, and this kind of project that we're doing in English 2210 absolutely supports that ethos that our university wants to foster in the students that graduate from our university. So if we embed community-engaged learning into the everyday college experience that you have, like your 2210 class, then you'll get access to that kind of learning potential and you'll build relationships outside of the university. So in this project two, the Community Engaged Learning Project, which will start in a few weeks and which will carry through the end of the semester, but only in the middle will you actually be working with your partner, the last assignment you'll be doing on your own, you can expect certain requirements. So the first thing that you should expect is that you and your group mates will be meeting by video, phone, or face-to-face -face with your partner organization. You will be using pre-existing called legacy content to work from. Sometimes and sometimes you won't. Sometimes your partner won't have the sort of thing that they want to have and so you'll have to create it. Sometimes it'll be a, let's say a brochure that they just want revised so you'll be working from legacy content. You'll be drafting a deliverable and workshopping with your partner. You'll be writing a formal pre and post reflection for Dr. Newmark, for me, You'll be keeping a three-part journal throughout the experience, and you have to have a number of entries, um, and I will tell you all about that in class. You'll be submitting the deliverable, the journal, and two reflections as project two, and you'll be delivering a public presentation. So that's what to expect. Now, you might wonder, and organizations wonder, why they should participate in this initiative. Why would a local nonprofit want to work with our students and one of our main goals is to have sustainable relationships so that students who work as a part of 2210 with a community partner this semester will not just be developing a relationship that lives and dies in one semester. Future students and future semesters will carry that relationship forward. So students participating with these organizations can help an organization fulfill its mission. They can help an organization assuage perhaps some issues concerning um, economic constraints and staffing constraints in that students will help them produce something, let's say it is a brochure, that otherwise they might have had to have paid an outside technical writer to create. You guys will be doing it within the context of your learning and output in a class in which you are enrolled. So student involvement can also result in social benefits in that you'll learn about what the organization does and then you'll talk about it with your family and friends. So an organization's um, profile will necessarily be expanded because of your increased awareness. And so students also can help to promote the enhancement of the UNM to community relationship that I was just referring to in the previous slide. Improving this relationship, building this relationship is important for all of us. So I wanted to show you on this slide, even though there's a little shadow behind the language here on the slide, uh, one example from a previous class. So this is an output that the adoptions group from Animal Humane, uh, they created this document in addition to four other documents for Animal Humane. This was their information sheet for first time dog owners. And they didn't have a legacy document here. They had to interview their SME, subject matter expert, which was their partner at Animal Humane, the director of the adoptions group, and learn from him what he thought was important to have in this kind of document. And they also had to do research online about what other kinds of documents like this look like and what information they contained. Um, they went through many drafts. They learned how to emphasize important information, chunk their text, create a logo, and it ended up looking really beautiful. Another group uh, created a recruitment video for Mandy's Farm, and I'm not gonna play it here in this video, but I'll share this slideshow in week two of our website, and you can watch this 40 second video on your own. While it is only 40 seconds long, it took a great deal of effort on the part of the group to select the images, um, to visit the farm and take pictures. They decided to do that, that was totally up to them, and to come up with the exact text that they needed to have on the screen that was going to communicate the information that Mandy's Farm would need to get to prospective volunteers in order for them to be interested in joining the organization's work. 
So more information will be coming to you all in the coming weeks, but I wanted to give you an overview about community-engaged learning in general and show you the specific application to our project in this class.